In the decades after World War II, Japan rebuilt incredibly fast. Its economy boomed, its cities expanded, and its population almost doubled. It started to face a new kind of issue. How do you move that many people through a city that wasn't designed for them? Well, in the 1970s, land was expensive and the streets were jammed. So in a city southwest of Tokyo, they came up with a new, rarer idea. The Shonan monorail hung from tracks rather than sitting on them. By running above the streets, no major demolition or digging was needed. It could weave through streets, through hills and parks with no difficulty. But Shonan was just one small and for a lot of it, one track line. The real challenge would come in a city much bigger, much denser and much harder to navigate. In the 1980s, Chiba was growing fast. It was Tokyo's international gateway and had a growing population. These people needed a better way to get around, but building a subway was too expensive and the streets were too narrow for trains or trams. So the government came up with an idea. What if instead of building below or on the streets, they built above the streets? If the Chiba urban monorail was gonna pass the Chiba streets, it was gonna to need to navigate tight corners. Traditional trains have an issue with this. They either need to slow down or you need to build what's known as a super elevated curve where one side of the track is higher than the other. This reduces the amount of what's known as centrifugal force felt by the passenger, which makes the journey more comfortable. However, it also means the train can't stop on a curve because it would stop on a tilt, which is more uncomfortable for passengers. That will be a problem on a local line like this. However, when the train hangs from the track, it swings around the corner, reducing the need to slow down and eliminating the need for a super elevated curve. The Chiba urban monorail offered a way to thread through city streets without demolishing homes or digging tunnels. Opened in 1988, today it's the world's longest, stretching over 15 kilometers over two lines. Inside, it feels fairly normal. Quiet, clean, maybe a little bumpier than your usual train. But when you look out the window, there's no track below. Just a clean drop to the street. Mechanically, it's clever. The motors and suspension are hidden above the train, inside the guideway. It grips on the top with bogies that run along internal rails. It's safe, efficient, and impossible to derail in any traditional sense. Now, this isn't the only one. Wuppertal in Germany has one that's been running since 1901. The Shonan monorail is still going, and a few cities in China are experimenting too. But Chiba's is still the biggest. You see a very different side of the city from up here. Not just rooftops, but the way a city moves. And it's a good example of just how Japan approaches infrastructure. Where others play it safe, Japan thinks outside the box. Not just building what's familiar, but what actually works the best. A solution tailored to the environment, even if that means breaking with convention. Commuters use it daily. It's part of city life. So if it works so well, why don't we see more of them? Well, cost. Suspended monorails are expensive to build. They're tricky to maintain. And the parts, they're custom built. So there's no shelf to pull from when something goes wrong. Still, in Chiba, it works. Not a prototype, not a gimmick, just public transport that happens to float. So when you look up to the sky and you see a train floating past, it's a reminder that cities can still surprise us. That sometimes thinking differently is the most practical way of all. <laughs>